Hey, I hope you're doing well. So you want to convert your trading ideas into actionable trading strategies. Well, perfect. You've come to the right place. Because today I'm going to show you how to implement and code a trading strategy in PineScript on TradingView. Really, the point of today is not to go into all the possible details and complications, but rather show you how to code a simple strategy from A to Z. So you get familiar with PineScript and you can use that script to build upon so you can run and backtest your own trading strategies. So let's get right into it. Here we are on TradingView with the usual choices. So the asset that's here, the time frame here, and if you want to add indicators, etc., that's in here. But since what we're doing today is building our own strategy from scratch, we're coming down here and clicking on Pine Editor. Then we want to come here in Open and click on New Strategy. Now, since we're starting from scratch, I'm actually going to delete this. And what I did is that I created this little cheat sheet which I'll be copy pasting step by step as I explain the whole process of coding the uh, strategy. So what I put here first line is simply giving the PineScript version, 5 being the latest. And here is our strategy header. So in here, there's a bunch of parameters that are very important to set up the strategy. The first one being the, the title and the name of the strategy, if you want. Overlay equal true is simply to set that once we'll be once we finish coding the strategy and we click on add to the chart, we'll automatically update it on the chart here. Then actually, let me put that in big so we see better. Then here I'm giving the initial capital. This is important when we're backtesting to know with how much money we are starting the backtest with. And then what follows here is to explain how, we, how much capital, how we deal with the capital each time we enter a trade. So we'll leave complicated position sizes computations for another time. Here we're simply saying that we'll be entering with a percentage of our total equity, so our total available capital at each on each trade, and how many how what is the percentage that we use when we enter each trade of the capital? Well we've set that to a hundred. We could put a 50, whatever, let's leave a hundred for now. Next bunch of parameters, importantly, when, especially when you're backtesting, you really want to consider your trading fees importantly because these can influence a lot performances of a strategy. So here I'm simply saying that the type, how we're considering them, is, well, it is a percentage, it'll be a percentage of the position size. And what is this percentage? Well, here I've given the value of 0.1, so 0.1%. By the way, if you want to trade crypto with some discounts on your training fees, I'll leave some registration links down below. You can have some very cool discounts. Okay, so next step, we can implement the indicators of our strategy. So I've consi I'm considering here as an example, Bollinger Bands. So what you see here, um, here, those two first variables that I'm defining are the parameters of the Bollinger Bands. So rather than giving the length for example, equal to 20 and the multiplier of the standard deviation equal to two. What I'm doing is that I'm using this input function here where I'm giving the default value and the title. The reason for that is that when you do this input, then let me show you on another, another strategy is that when you come here on the wheel and you come here, you have all these little things here. These are because you've put this input here. So you can then come here and change things as you want. Okay. So that's the input. We have the two, and we did that for the two parameters of our Bollinger Bands. As you might know, Bollinger Bands, how you compute them? Well, you compute the first, the average. So that's a simple moving average generally, or maybe you can do with an exponential moving average, whatever. Here we're going for simple moving average. No, by the way, what I'm using here is a built-in, the built-in functions of PineScript, where TA just stands for technical analysis. So if you want some details, you just come here, click on control and left click with your mouse. This will open this info panel here, which is really, it should be your friend when you're building strategies. So you can see it'll give you some examples, explains how it works. And quite importantly, what, what type of, what are the parameters that it is expecting? So the source we're computing, we're saying that this will be the close of the price and we have to give the length to compute the simple moving average. Great. And you can see here, there's a lot of built-in functions that you can use. They're all in here anyways. 
So let me close. By the way, let me also mention that you really don't hesitate. Some other people do put their codes in public. So for example, let me show you this indicator. If I do ATR, for example, that I want to show this one, which I, I've developed in another video, some ATR bands. Anyways, the point is, you see here, this the code has been made public. So if I come here and click here, I get to the source code of the indicator and you can totally come and copy paste whatever. The same for other strategies. This is another strategy I developed recently. Actually, it trades crypto anomalies, volatility anomalies. So it's a mean reversion strategy and I've actually turned it into a fully cost customizable and free Python trading bot. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to find out more about that. Anyways, so the point is same thing here. If the the person has released the script and made it public, the source code, you can have here. Oh, no, I don't want to change anyways. So you can have it here and just copy and paste and use what other people have done, of course. So anyways, back to the to the strategy. So you can see, so to compute the Bollinger Bands, as you might know, the so the you start from this average, so this SMA, but you also compute the standard deviation of the price. And then to compute the upper and lower band, you simply use from this average, you displace this standard deviation of the price by a given multiplier, which is the one that we have set here. Great. Next step. Actually, generally, I put that at the end of the code just for clarity and logic. But I think we can have a look now. And that is to plot and see what these Bollinger Bands look like on the, on the chart. So let's do a little add to the chart. And you can see that we have indeed here our nice Bollinger Bands. So here it'll open also the strategy tester. So that's where we, where we would have the practice. But since we still haven't coded, entered our entry and exit rules, etc., we don't have anything so far. Speaking of which, let's implement our strategy rules and signals. So since Bollinger Bands are typically a trend slash volatility indicator, let's go for something simple. And let's say, for example, that we would enter along when the price is closes above the upper Bollinger Band, and then we'll exit that, that long when the price now closes below that Bollinger Band. So we would enter at that point here and then close at the, on that candle here. And let's do the mirror of that to, for the shorts. So when the price is now closes below the short and then when the price below, beg your pardon, the lower Bollinger Band and then exit that short when the price is now crosses above the lower Bollinger Band. So let's go back to our Pine Editor. Let me go in, in, in big and we'll simply come here and next step, so we are copy pasting what I could, I've named the signals here. Okay, so how does this turn into code? Well, you can see I've defined a condition. So now entry long, exit long, uh, the same for shorts. These variables are now will be the result of the condition that I put here. So there will either be there'll be booleans, so either a true or a false. So my entry long is will simply be true. When on a candle, I have that, I have, you see, I'm using TA as well. I have a crossover of the close of the price above, crossover above the upper Bollinger Band. Now for the exit, as we've mentioned, it is the, the sort of opposite crossover. So here I'm putting a cross under. So exit long will be true when I have the close that crosses under the upper Bollinger Band. And you can see same kind of idea here for the shorts. Now, let me just mention we're using these TA crossover over functions, but maybe you, you could have chosen different things. And for example, you could have gone for, you can use operators like here, the, this inequality operators. And of course, if you want to write more complicated conditions and couple several, you could put some AND operators here and say for this to be valid, to be true, I want this condition in here, this condition in here to be true, and this condition here. Or you could put indeed a or operator, just put an or, etc. Anyway, so we're sticking to this symbol case here, and we have simply now we have set indeed our conditions. Hey guys, just a few seconds to mention 
please keep in mind that this is by no means financial advice. It is a educational tutorial. And of course, trading has risk, the main one being of losing your capital. Anyways, back to our business now. So let's now add our strategy entries and exits. Okay, so let me copy this here and paste that here. And as you can see, I'm indeed using our entry long, entry exit long, etc. conditions here. And I'm using those in some if statements. Basically, I'm saying if entry long is true and strategy dot position size equal or equal zero. This little part here is simply to force that I can only enter one position at a time. So if all of this is true, what do I do? I want to do a entry, enter a trade. So I'm putting this strategy entry. And what is this entry that I'm doing? Well, this here is a long. I'm setting the direction of the trade to long with this strategy dot long. But actually the first parameter was this string here. This is to give the identifier of that position. Why do I need an identifier? Well, basically because when I want to close, I need to close what position? Well, which one? Well, that long, the one that I gave here. And as you can see here, I'm only doing if exit long strategy, close the long. And you can see it's the exact same idea, but for the short that I've put here. Great. By the way, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know down below or join our community Discord. And if you're enjoying this video, please give me a little like and consider subscribing to the channel. Anyways, I think we're ready now. What we can do is maybe put that in small and actually we can save and this will automatically update to the chart. But since it's the first time I'm saving, I need to give the name. It's using the name that I give in the strategy header as default. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to put save. And as you can see, we have our strategy that was now updated on the chart. And as you can see, we indeed have some entries and exits we can see here we have entered along, we have the identifiers that are written here. So here is an entry, we have a close of the long at that point here, following the strategy that we wanted. Those are a lot of longs, we can have a short here. Great. The other thing that has happened is that we can now also go in the strategy tester and we will see some results, some backtest results here with some first hand statistics here. But if you come for example, in list of trades, you can examine all the trades that you see here. And if you, for example, click on here, this will zoom, will take the chart to that exact trade here. Then another thing that you can have a look at is in properties, you'll get all the dates. So the default dates of the backtesting dates here, but performance summary, you can here have some more details analytics. You can see, okay, net profits, draw down some important ratios, sharp ratios, etc, etc. Great. So I've linked this code in the description down below so you can grab it easily. Now, if you want to learn how to, for example, consider add a take profit stop loss to a strategy, you can check this video out. Or if you're interested in creating and running automatically your own Python crypto trading bot, then that video is the one. Thanks for watching. Happy trading and take care.